Good morning ladies and gentlemen, here we are. We are on a kayak fishing mission this morning. We're actually going to practice for a tournament that I have this coming Saturday. And I'll be totally honest, I'm on absolutely nothing on the lake that we are fishing. And I'm going to a brand new part of the lake that I've never been to before in this video to go break it down and see what I can find and hopefully find an area to fish Saturday. And so that is what we're doing. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it. And without further ado, let's get on the water and let's see if we can catch some fish. Well, boys and girls, we're starting with the very obvious today, the old Blaze Money Badger. And this particular Blaze Money Badger has seen some stuff. I mean, just look at that. That thing is wore up. But uh, yeah, we're out here. We're about to get after it today, doing a little bit of tournament practice. We're going to see what we can find on this part of the lake. Hopefully, we find something worth coming back to Saturday for our tournament now this little section of the lake i'll be totally honest i have never been here before or fished any of this what's hilarious is i've lived on this lake my whole entire life and i've seen essentially all of it except for like this little section of it up here and so i picked this spot because there's a creek flows in the back i figured the water would be a little bit dirtier a little bit warmer and my assumption was correct i'm looking at anywhere between 49 and 50 degree water champs um, which is about five degrees warmer than the main lake and obviously you guys can see the clarity is a lot different now the reason i'm looking for this right now is because it's going to let me do the things that i like to do like crank the money badger throw a spinnerbait throw a bladed jig and hopefully get some of these fish to react because these fish should be up a little bit shallower they should be a lot more willing to react to things and i won't have to drag around for them. now that being said that's the plan and we all know that plans don't always hold together so what we've got to do is we've got to get out here we've got to explore this brand new part of the lake and we just got to fish we got to fish and see if we can get them to bite and so that is what we're going to do today explore a brand new part of the lake that i've never explored before see if we can get some fish to eat and uh yeah hopefully find something for our tournament because i'll be 100 honest with you i am on nothing <laughs> absolutely nothing and so uh we gotta find something today or we're gonna be up shit creek without a paddle so yeah let's uh let's get after it let's go see what we can find let's catch some fish That's awesome. Well, let's see how long he gets real quick. Good idea. That's what I'm dealing with here. All right, guys. 18 and a half inch largemouth. It's actually taken right back over here. We're gonna put it right back where we found him. And hopefully, he will eat again on Saturday. That's the kind of fish we need right there. You catch three of those, and we are cooking. Thank you, 
sir. Thank you, buddy. Wind's blowing, the wind started blowing. The water has progressively got warmer as we're going back through here. That fish was essentially sitting on a transition where it goes from big chunk rock to kind of smaller boulder rock right there. Right on the back side of a of a small point. You know, I wouldn't call it a big point, but it's definitely like a transitional kind of point area, which makes sense. And he was right up on the bank. Like I was grinding that crankbait when he ate it. And it didn't eat it hard. Um, very soft bite, just kind of loaded up on it. You noticed, you know, I, I didn't really react to it because I thought I was like hung in something. But he, uh, he ate it nonetheless. And that's the kind of fish that we're looking for. I mean, honestly, if I only catch three of those, this is going to be a good area. Um, just because three big ones like that. I mean, this may be one of those areas where it's just three better than average fish, you know, or five or six better than average fish up in here. Don't get a lot of bites, but the bites you get are good ones. So, yeah, that makes me excited. Organize this kayak a little bit, guys. I'll tell you one thing, guys, that um, I never want you to think is that I have anything organized. Um, I don't. I try to stay organized, but for the most part, it is literally just throw everything in the kayak and uh, go and let it sort itself out later. I always uh, like the phrase, you know, let God sort it out. Well, I mean, every single day when I get in my kayak, I normal number one, I say a little prayer, keep me safe. But number two, help me just kind of sort out my day because I know, and I know that God knows that uh, whatever I've got going on is just a total mess. And check this out. That's a drill bit. Never mind. I thought that was a piece of a crawl dead. See, welcome to my brain. Welcome to my brain. <laughs> All right, guys. So I've moved on back in this creek a little bit. There's a bunch of wood back here that I'm going to throw a Texas rig around. But what I noticed kind of looking back on where I caught that fish, this creek channel bends right here and dumps right into that point where I caught that fish and then hooks and that creek channel follows that bank down, which makes perfect sense as to why that fish was sitting there. That's something that it doesn't matter if it's on the macro, the big scale, or the micro, the small scale on a lake. If you can find those channel swings, whether it be the river channel or the creek channel, normally there's going to be some fish sitting on that stuff. And right where that creek dumped out, there were fish, or there was a fish sitting on it. And so it makes since now right now i'm on the inside bend of this creek this is a little bit deeper um, than what we caught that fish on and you know that's another piece of the puzzle is kind of the depth that i was in i was in about nine foot throwing up into practically nothing when i caught that fish so that may be something that i have to watch out for is just the water depth in which i'm fishing and right now i'm in about 11 to 12 and so a little bit deeper a little bit steeper um, style and the rock is completely different too. That can be another huge factor is the kind of rock that they're actually sitting on. And so just a couple pieces of the puzzle there to consider when you're actually fishing. You know, I think a lot of people just catch a fish and they don't take just a few moments to kind of slow down and look at what they actually caught that fish on. You know, the bait is important, rod reel line, all very important. But I think the biggest factor is the where. You know, where and why is that fish sitting there? And I think what I'm dealing with there was not only a point, a windblown point with the wind blowing on, but also a creek channel swing where that water dumped right in there, making that fish probably sit there and just wait for things to come to his face so he could eat them. Because like I've said before, and I'll say it again, fish are lazy. They are very reactionary top animals, just like a lion. It will sit and wait and wait and wait until the perfect moment and then when the perfect moment presents itself is when it'll smoke whatever it's eating and so yeah we're uh we're gonna keep going here though the wind keeps blowing off and on i said the wind wasn't blowing earlier but it looks as though this cloud cover is starting to move in just a little bit this front's starting to move in and so there's a little bit of wind um, and i got that bite when the wind was blowing now i don't know if that 110 percent you know affected that bite whether that fish would have ate or not without the wind but it's just again another 
piece of the puzzle to consider. And so, yeah, I'm gonna keep after it here, folks. I'm gonna keep on fishing because if I can figure this bite out, this is looking like a pretty promising place for Saturday morning. And uh, I like that. I like anywhere I can crack the crankbait. So, either you gotta keep on going. Got the Doritos. Got the juice. It is the Doritos. We're gonna do a little moving and grooving here real quick. I'll eat myself a little snack. We're gonna push on back up into this creek and I just kinda wanna see what it looks like back in here. There's a lot of bait fish activity. And we're only in about six foot of water right here. And so I got a feeling it kind of deltas out back here and gets really, really shallow. And or I could turn a corner up here and it could get deep again. And this may just be like an area where there's just a lot of, you know, siltation. It's kind of silted in, making it look like it's a lot more shallow than it is. But these really kind of bluffy style walls tell me that it's not. But you know that can be kind of deceiving sometimes especially when it comes to the depth of something i mean even getting right here on them looking at about seven eight foot deep so i mean it's holding some depth but i'd like to go on back in here and kind of just see what i'm dealing with with this creek because if this creek's flowing good it could be one of those things that i hit the main out there early in the morning try to get a bite and scoot back in here and do the creek thing in the afternoon so yeah we're gonna pop on up through here and see what we can find see if there's something different to look at while enjoying some burritos Where's the Doritos? I don't want to laugh. Heck yeah, I do. Look at eat this thing. I mean, do you think he wanted it? Good job, bud. Man, I want to eat that thing. I freaking eat it. It's a good little fish right there, boys and girls. A little chunk nasty. Let's see how long he is. Because, you know. That's important when you're fishing a kayak tournament theory. Just a lot of fishes, they gotta be real long, you know? Real long. All right, guys, there we go. Fish number two of the day. 15 and a half incher on the old spinnerbait. Slow slow with that spinnerbait. I figured there ought to be a fish there though. And they're all the Doritos. So one thing I've noticed guys is that these fish seem to be sitting on the same type of rock. It's uh, anywhere there's like a transition from not this dark stuff that you guys can see here but this like lighter stuff into like a more kind of gravelly um, sort of bottom. I wouldn't say gravel. It just goes from like big chunks and like sheets of the rock into more kind of that chunky style stuff there seems to be fish sitting there and so uh yeah just an observation i made anywhere the channel swings and water's dumping into it and anywhere that kind of bigger rock gets gets uh filtered down into that little bit finer rock there seems to be a fish sitting on it so very interesting i got the spinnerbait in my hand right now um, obviously just because I just got a bite on it. So I want to keep tossing it for a minute just to see if that's a bite back in here. Water temperature is 52.4. So we're almost at 53 degrees. And uh, I don't know how much more creek that we have left. I really need to pull up Google Earth and kind of take a look at it and see how far we can go back. Because all I want to know is, is the creek flowing? Um, and is there like a, a, a point at which the creek kind of dumps in? Because if there is... There may be a bunch of fish sitting on it. I think the biggest problem I'm going to find, though, is I'm going to run out of water here in just a minute. 
but you would be amazed how little of water that you actually need for there to be a bunch of fish sitting in one spot so it may get down here and it may deepen up a little bit and if there's a deep pool back here it could hold a lot of fish and not just like one or two but like sit there and catch five six seven and obviously we wouldn't do that we would save that for tournament day but that's what i'm kind of looking for right now I'm about to just buzz on back through here and see it. i said that and then i saw that nice little spot back there where i caught that fish on that spinnerbait kind of caught mine and i slowed down and fished on it but yeah we're gonna bust on back through here i'm actually doing it this time we'll save this we'll fish it on the way out because it bends on back through here quite a ways and i just want to see kind of what i'm dealing with back here well boys and girls we have found the end of the road i don't think we're going any farther than that if i was in the shoaly we could go on up and i mean i, I mean technically i could paddle us on up there right now I just don't think it's worth it. This creek doesn't have the kind of depth that it needs to uh, hold any kind of fish. Uh, maybe on up it does. You know, it'd be one of the things you'd have to put up and float down, but I don't think that that's worth it. I think what we're going to do is fish our way out of here because there is enough depth that uh, there could be some fish sitting in this stuff. And honestly, you would be amazed at what a fish can sit on. I mean, I guess you wouldn't, especially if you watch my channel, you know, and you've seen the kind of stuff that I've been able to catch fish on before. It's, I mean, four or five inches of water and there's a four pounder sitting on it. So, good to know though. Good to know this, uh, this creek, how it runs, what it's doing. I think this will be really interesting to explore in the summer, especially since water is 53 in here now. What that means is that it is probably a ground spring and that there is just a certain temperature range that this creek holds a majority of the year and you know one thing that i have learned about these creeks is like you know they'll fluctuate anywhere from 50 to 60 degrees 65 degrees at the most but it's like that's about the range that they stay they're not going to get any cooler they're not going to get any warmer just because that water is literally coming out of the ground and that you know underwater ground uh, or underwater ground ground underground water there we go <laughs> Uh, water is just a lot more stable overall so yeah really cool glad we came back here and explored it it's always worth the uh, exploration to get back here to see if there is anything worth actually fishing back here and so what we're going to do is we're going to fish our way back out to the main and then just keep on keeping on we've got a bite on the money badger we've got a bite on the power blade i mean two solid bites too so like i said at the beginning of the video this could be one of those things that we just end up kind of having to weed through a lot of areas and we end up getting two three big bites all day and honestly that is good with me i need three bites in this tournament to have a limit and honestly if every fish in my limit looks like what i've already caught today i feel like we're going to be in a pretty good position to do well so yeah we're going to float out here and keep on fishing i'm excited to see this in the summer when the water is back up quite a bit because I got a feeling this could be a little uh, buzz bait hole. Probably come in here and catch you a few big ones. Dude, I can't, I can't seem to figure out the bite here. I mean, I get a bite on a spinnerbait and then can't get another bite on a spinnerbait. I get a, ba a bite on a money badger, can't seem to get another bite on a money badger. There we go. It ain't big, but it's a fish. It's a spot. A Kentucky spot? Yep. There you go, guys. I wonder if he'd make a limit. Let's see. And with an 18 and a 15, that ain't too bad. Spots. Oh, yeah, he'd be my limit. 12 and a quarter. Well, there you go, guys. There's our limit. Well, that's good. That was on a spinning bait. Spoke well, too it. soon, yeah. Spoke too soon. Well, oh, guys, one thing that I have noticed about today is the wind has to be blowing. When the wind's blowing, I get bites. When the wind's not blowing, I don't get bites, which is, it's a fascinating thought that, you know, that a fish would eat when the wind blows or that they know the wind's blowing. But I think a lot of it's just a current and positioning thing. And so, just like that. There we go. Oh, there was one. There was one mark him too so there you go yeah it's a 
it's a wind thing. So when the wind's blowing, it's blowing at my back right now. These fish tend to eat, but when it's not blowing, they just don't. I, it's one of those things I've never been able to explain how they know the wind's blowing or what it is, but any sort of current, they're going to use it. And that wind created current, they definitely use it. And just like that fish right there with that wind blowing in my back, blowing me down this bank, he was up there and ate that crankbait. So that's bite number four. That would have definitely been an upgrade. We just got to get those fish in the boat. But I think this is definitely going to be our spot for Saturday just because of the amount of bites that I've actually got in here. Um, fishing pretty good. And it seems like, you know, when you do get a bite, even though it is not many, it tends to be the better than average fish. So that's what we're looking for. Okay, 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 okay. We're going to try a little bit of root beer for just a minute a little root beer clicking fritz side just with the water clarity the depth of which we are in this would be a good little crankbait for this area because we are only in six and a half foot of water right here so i mean the money badger could do it but i think just for efficiency's sake and to just show them something a little bit different i'm gonna throw the old clicking fritz side because i tell you what it would be nice to have a couple fallback plans you know not only we got the cranking bite, the spinnerbait bite, but also then have another shallower water crankbait bite, um, as well as hopefully like a tree flipping bite too. I mean, that would be awesome, which I think with that colder weather moving in um, with this front and the high, like I think the high Saturday is only in the 40s. So, I mean, the high today is in the upper 60s, almost in the freaking 70s. And then we're gonna have this massive temperature swing. I think that if I can find some isolated wood that those fish would probably pull up on that stuff and maybe be like a fallback bite if for some reason the cranking and spinnerbait bite just falls apart so it's got to keep on keeping on thought processes here people got to keep the old brain of working keep kind of piecing this thing together because if we can have two or three plans i feel a lot better of having two or three plans than i do having one plan <laughs> I just got bit. I just straight got bit right there. That was a bite. I'm gonna mark that because that was a bite. Hmm. 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 Well, that was a bite. That was shallow, shallow too. That was extremely shallow. Must have been cranking it a little too fast for him. Interesting. Thumped it. Just didn't get it. I will never understand, and, and you tell me your theories down below. I'll never understand how something like a bass hits something with treble hooks and doesn't get hooked because, like, I can't even look at a treble hook pay without getting hooked. I mean, it amazes me that they can ram into it with their face and somehow doesn't get a treble hook in it. <laughs> I love it. I swear I find free crap all the time. It's another good one too. It's a spro little John. <laughs> That's funny. Let's get this fishing line in the water. That dude broke off a whole spool of fishing line. Oh, mercy. I'm cranking that thing on like 20 pounds. 
Oh no, this shouldn't come off. But hey, there you go. Spro little John. So this year that makes a whopper plopper, a jackhammer, a spro little John, a Berkeley flicker shad, this mega bass spinnerbait, and then that. I have to say, my collection is uh, is a growing. Seems like every time I go on a fishing trip, I find anywhere between a ten to fifteen dollar bait. All right, guys, I think we're done. I think we're gonna get out of here, leave this alone because this is definitely where we're coming Saturday for the tournament. So, got all the bots I need to know that this place is good. So. Come spend eight hours here Saturday and see what we get done. I'll see you guys when we get in the truck. Mm, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We're done. Like I said, see you in the truck. Here we are. That was a pretty good practice day, to be totally honest with you guys. I feel really comfortable about going back there. You know, I got the three into the boat. I got a couple more bites that I know are absolutely bites that I think. <clears throat> Well, I feel really, really good about that. I feel comfortable going back there Saturday. I feel as though I got enough bites. Well, guys, seeing as I don't have anything else going for me and I caught an 18, a 15, and a 12-incher there and had a couple more bites, I think that's my place for Saturday. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, those are the kind of bites that you need to win tournaments, especially the tournament that we're fishing Saturday. So I think if I can catch the same quality of fish that I did today, Saturday, and have a full eight hours out there to really pick that place apart, I think that we're gonna be able to do pretty good. So we just gotta get out there Saturday and we've got to find out. But as always, guys, I appreciate you watching. Make sure you go down in the description, check out all the baits that I threw today. They will be linked down below in the description as well as in the pinned comment. And as always, you guys are sweet, and thank you for watching.